So for this project, I started with a 36 by 28 inch old window that I had actually picked up at a garage sale probably well over a year ago. I showed it at the end of my one of my videos, I know, and I might have to go back to look to see how long ago it was. But anyway, I just love the saying on it, a season for all things under heaven, and I knew I wanted to put a tree on it. So what I did was I went into my Cricut design space and I actually found a tree that I liked there. And I copied and pasted it into another program on my computer that I could make larger. And um, then I printed it out, taped it together, and then taped it underneath my window to use as a template. Next, I used a textured piece of stained glass that I had picked up at Hobby Lobby and I printed out the bottom part of the pattern, the tree trunk, and I traced it out and I actually cut it into two pieces, one for the roots at the bottom and one for the trunk going up that's gonna be in the center bottom uh, window pane. This is a textured piece of stained glass and I am cutting it on the smooth side, which is what you're supposed to do, even though it does look like I am cutting on the textured side simple shapes with stained glass and I did learn to cut stained glass by simply watching YouTube videos. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels dedicated to cutting stained glass and they are all free. And I just scored it and broke it and uh, put the roots down and then I set the uh, trunk there and decided that it needed to be cut a little bit. And I just used the another piece of stained glass to as a guide and then went ahead and scored that and broke that and fit the piece in and this is pretty much how I do the entire project I um, just cut pieces of stained glass I'm not using any kind of a pattern I'm just kind of guessing scoring it breaking it and for this one that's going in the top center pane. This is where the um, tree would split at the top. And I'm just, I do end up changing this toward the end, but for now, this is how I put it down. And then the rest of the, the rest of the project, I just go ahead and I start cutting branches, nothing, I'm not following a pattern in any way, just randomly cutting a bunch of different branches and I'm gonna piece them in one by one. Uh, see where they fit, see where they look good. So the pattern that I have underneath there, the tree, I'm not really um, following exactly, but just kind of using it as a guide. And I just fit one piece in at a time, see, um, cut it, see how I like it, adjust it if need be, and continue on throughout the whole project doing this the same way and I do not um, film the entire thing because <laughs> I would go crazy going back and forth back and forth with the camera but um, I think you can kind of get the gist of it I just kind of try to fit uh, put a piece wherever I think it would look good using the bottom as a guide but not as a pattern and then using my little black um, permanent marker to mark it and then using that marker line as a guide to cut it. And this, I, I am going through this super fast because honestly this took multiple hours over a couple of days just messing around with the different branches, seeing where I wanted each one. And um, that's it until I got it just about the way that I wanted it. Now, people who do a stained glass and follow stained glass patterns, you really have to have exact matches in order to get something to match up again against it. And that is much more difficult than what I'm doing here. This is just trying to piece pieces in. And also, nothing is exact. It's not exactly flush against the um, window or the tree trunk. And it's okay because I'm going to be using pieces of glass and putting it on top of the tree trunk so it will hide any little imperfections that there are. Um, for this one, it's not a perfect science by any means. And like I said, I just continue to 
cut more and more branches and fit them in wherever I feel like they should go. Then I actually take the paper out from behind it. Even though it's not done, I take the paper out from behind it because it's kind of driving me crazy. And you can see how I changed that top part um, where the tree kind of divides and the branches go each way. And again, I do change I do change this top part one more time at the very end. But um, I was kind of being distracted by the paper underneath, so this was good enough, and I just continued adding more and more branches until I was pretty happy with it. And this is about when I took it out to the garage. And so I took it out to the garage, and I worked on one pane at a time. I picked up the glass, I used my glass sander, and I just did the top edges because the resin is not going to go up to the top edges and cover it. And if anybody was to put their finger across there, they would slice their finger. And actually, I did slice my finger. Um, so just went over those quick, went into the house, washed them off, dried them off and then use the rubbing alcohol after they were all dry i used the rubbing alcohol to get any stray marker marks off of them because that permanent marker really won't come off with just the soap and water so i used the 99 percent um, rubbing alcohol and just wiped any stray magic marker marks off and then they were ready to be put down and um I'm going to put this, like I said, I'm working on one pane at a time. And next I clean off that pane real good with the rubbing alcohol. And then I have this MAC glue. So this glue I bought like a year ago. And I'm you can use regular Clear Elmer's glue. But I thought, oh, I might as well use this up. It dries clear and it's supposed to be um, dry real fast. So I put it on the back of each piece and then just put it down. And the reason I'm gluing each of these pieces down is when I go to put the glass leaves on, I know these branches, especially the smaller branches, are going to be moving all over the place and it's going to drive me crazy. So I thought it would be in my best interest to have these uh, glued down so that they don't move all over the place. Now I'm done gluing everything down and I've brought it back into the house and I'm ready to um, color the leaves that I'm going to put on it. So here I have two different uh, fire glasses that I've already sprayed and these were actually sprayed with Tamaya metallic orange spray paint and I gave them a very light coat and it kept them uh, kind of transparent. So I did this for another project that I was working on and I'm just showing you the two different glass types of glass that I sprayed this onto. So first I have the celestial fire glass which is much larger. This is quarter inch that I um, ordered, but you'll see that a lot of pieces will come bigger than that. And I've sprayed that with the metallic. And then this is fire glass or uh, broken glass, I guess. And it is reflective. This is the reflective. And this is from Michaels. And it's, um, they have this up there all the time, the Ashland Decorative Filler. It comes in a container like this. And it's the reflective fire glass. And I want to say they call this gold reflective fire glass. But honestly, to me, it looks uh, silver. But you can call it whatever you want. And this is much smaller. And for this project, I think this is actually better. But what you can do is you can actually take these pieces, the larger pieces, and use your nipper tool and break them in half. And some of them are really hard to break and others uh, crumble pretty easily. So I am gonna be using both of these because I already have them uh, colored with the orange. And this is the orange metallic Tamaya spray paint. So they do have an orange translucent, but as long as I already have those colored, I'm gonna go ahead and use them. And then I'm gonna use this to color with the uh, yellow translucent spray paint to make the leaves. And then this glass I already had, it's kind of a pinkish glass, and this is actually from the Dollar Tree. 
It comes in a little bag of about a pound of glass for $1.25 back in their floral section. And I am going to go ahead and use this as long as I already have it and I don't have another use for it. And I'm going to spray it uh, very lightly with the metallic red for the also for the fall leaves. Again, this is the Dollar Tree pink glass, uh, $1.25 for about a pound of glass. I'm just spreading it out. And then I take the Tamaya metallic, I believe it's the TS95, and I give it several light coats of the red. And I let that dry. And then on the other paper, I spread out the glass from Michael's. And I believe it's called Gold Reflective Glass. And I use the Tamaya Translucent Yellow and give that several coats. And then after the red has dried for a little while, I do go back and give it enough, mix it around and then give it another coat because it really needed a, to be a little bit darker. I forgot to put the painter's tape around the back and I do this as an extra precaution against resin leaks around the edges. And this should really be done before you put the glass on the other side, but because the glass was all glued down, I was able to flip it over not seal around the back edges of the window like I would when I'm doing a picture frame just because it looked like it was intact and I felt like the painter's tape would be enough. And then I used some painter's tape to clean up all the debris around the tree before I started putting the glass on. And then I started putting the glass on one color at a time, red, then orange, then green, then yellow, and I looked at it and I thought, oh my God, this looks like chaos. And I sent some pictures to my kids just for their honest opinions and they said it just looked too chaotic. So I ended up taking off the green and the yellow and just leaving a couple yellows on it. I left the orange, red, and a few little uh, yellows. And then I wanted to do a tire swing hanging from the tree. And I was trying to figure out, you know, I'm terrible at painting. So I had these Christmas ornaments left over. And originally I was going to try to do something like this. But um, after messing around with it for a while, I decided to search on the computer to see if I could find something that would work for a picture because I just... I just cannot paint. I need a template. I need something behind the glass to at least use an outline for. And these would have been really cute, but I don't know. I'm just thinking I just wanted to use just paint and glass for this project and not use those. Those are the, actually the little ornaments that I used for my Christmas train, which was real cute then, but I didn't really want to use them again. So what I did next, I decided I needed to at least do the tire swing. And um, I found a, a round, it was a little round top, the same size that I thought the tire swing should be. And I put it down and I put clear Elmer's glue all the way around the perimeter of it. And then I took a two millimeter rhinestone chain and followed along where I put the clear Elmer's glue. And it was really hard to, once you took that um, little template off of there, it was really hard to keep it round. And then I put a round one in the center for the inside of the tire. And again, this was really hard to uh, keep it perfectly round. And then I took some glass. It's that um, Ashland decorative filler from Michael's black glass that I had gotten, not this Halloween, but actually the Halloween before. And I just filled in um, the inside of the tire. And this was kind of messy. I had to keep on using painter's tape to pick up the little pieces of stray glass. And then once I got that on, I did take some MAC glue the MAC glue that I had used for the tree and put that down. And then I actually took more glass and put it on top of it. So this is actually an image from Shutterfly that I had found on the, not Shutterfly, it's called um, Shutterstock that I had found on the computer. It's actually a website that um, you can purchase images from. And I did sign up for a one-month trial. You have to put your credit card information in, 
and um, if you don't cancel it before the month is over, you get charged. It's $29 a month, and you can get 10 images a month. So anyway, I took this image. I was able to print this out, and I just thought this was so cute. If I could stick that behind the glass on top of that um, little tire, I could paint that little boy in. So I enlarged it to the size of the tire that I had made and then I cut it out and I taped it underneath the glass and I thought that would help me to paint that on there. And then I went ahead and I just started painting it with regular acrylic paint, just old cheap acrylic paint that I buy um, at Walmart or at Michaels. Uh, very inexpensive. I resined over this type of uh, paint many many times and it's fine with it works fine with resin and so then I wanted on the other side of the glass I wanted to put two uh, little girls playing in the leaves and I thought those girls were adorable but I thought their heads were too big so <laughs> I downloaded this from the same site I cut their bodies out and then I made the heads smaller and then cut the heads out and taped the heads to the bodies and um, put them, tape those behind the glass. And you can see how I'm gonna pile the glass up there and make it look like they're jumping in the leaves. And then I painted the two little girls with the same uh, acrylic craft paint. And then after I had uh, painted them somewhat, just given them a coat, I went ahead and I took off the paper off the back because it's very distracting and you really cannot tell where um, you need to put more paint. So once you put your first coat down, you have to take that paper off of the back. And I'll show you um, in a second how you can see then the areas that you have to repaint. And painting on glass, you have to do several coats and you have to wait until the coat before is perfectly dry. Otherwise, you'll pull up the coat underneath it. And that's when uh, painting on glass, it's more difficult than painting on a canvas. And right here you can see how thin the paint is. And now when you do it, a second coat on it, you're better um, able to see what really needs to be painted again. And then I went ahead and finished up the painting. So the next thing that I had to do was find a rope for the little boy to be holding that would be attached to the tree. And I did have a piece of twine, and I took the piece of twine, I measured it out, and I took UV resin and put it over it. And um, so you see how it kind of bends. You want to have it perfectly straight. And once you put the UV resin on it, um, I pulled it taut and then put the UV light on top of it so that it would cure straight. And here you can see I put the rope in his arms. So anyway, next it's ready for the resin. The resin I'm using for this project is called KS Resin. It's a one-to-one -one ratio resin that you mix slowly in a cup for three minutes to prevent bubbles, uh, making sure you scrape the sides and scrape the bottom, just like all other resins, to assure thorough mixing. I put it in this little bottle with a, a little spout on it because I thought maybe that I could um, control where the resin goes better because I do not want it to go on any of the tree trunks. You'll see me going back and forth between pouring it out of a cup and pouring it out of that like ketchup container because it really hurts my hands to squeeze it. And the reason I don't want it to go on the tree trunk is because it's a textured glass and if you just dump resin over it, the texture will disappear. If by accident some of the text or some of the resin gets on the textured glass, if you take your finger and kind of wipe it off, It'll still leave a little shine, but it won't take the texture away. So um, here I am just using the tool to spread it around. And at one point, I'm even using my finger to spread the resin around. I think I ended up using five, six ounce cups of resin. So 30 ounces of resin for this project. And I think that was about right. 
and like I said, I really didn't pour it over the trees. If I was going to have to do that, I probably would have needed a little bit more. So after I'm done spreading all the resin out, I do use the kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles. And when I finish a project, I come back about every 15 minutes to check for placement of glass, to make sure nothing's moved, to check for bubbles, using the torch again to get rid of any of the bubbles. And I also look for sediment because for some reason <laughs> I don't see the sediment at first, but like after 15 minutes, I don't know if it rises to the top or, or what, but um, I get, I move glass back into place with the toothpick. I also use um, a little toothpick to get sediment out of the out of the resin. I do have a bunch of cats. I do not allow the cats in the rooms that I resin in, but inevitably I end up with a cat hair and all of my stuff. And I do have some little birds. You probably can't see me doing it, but I have some little birds that I put on uh, the tree in various areas. Your project needs to sit on a flat level surface overnight. KS resin takes about 12 hours before you can touch it and a full 72 hours to fully cure. It cures best at temperatures between 75 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. All resins are different. You need to read the directions for the resin that you are using. Hey everyone, I hope you can see this all right. I do have a piece of paper I'll put behind it in a minute. Uh, so you can see it better. But anyway, um, this this was, um, I wouldn't say it was a really hard project to do, but um, it was time consuming with cutting all the branches and that, and then sanding them. So the part that got sanded was just this edge here because this is not covered by resin in any way. And if you were to take your hand and uh, finger and put it up there, someone was to touch it, uh, here you'd probably be less likely to, but here you could really slice your finger. So that's why I sanded the top edge of them all down. And um, so what I would do different next time <laughs> is I mixed up all the resin. I don't know what I was thinking. I mixed up all the resin and did the entire thing at one time. And in the past, when I've done windows, I've done sections at a time. Um just because it's easier that way. And that's what I should have done. So I was really having to rush <laughs> to make sure that the resin didn't set up because by the time I mixed up five cups of resin, you know, poured it, mixed each one for three or four minutes, um, and then had them set aside for about 15 minutes for the bubbles to dissipate a little bit. And then I started pouring. I really had to kind of work fast getting it all done. So that's my suggestion. If you're working on something big like this, you could actually do like the top part one day and come back and do the bottom part another day. And that's always how I've done it with my other windows. I don't know. I just wasn't thinking, I guess. So the other thing was um, in the past, I've made the mistake. I've used this exact same uh, stained glass and I poured the dumped the resin right on top of it and the texture totally disappeared and I'm hoping you can see this the, I can see it really good here you can see the texture because I think it makes it look like more like a, a tree trunk and um, so without pouring the resin on it now you could put a little bit on your gloved finger and go over it like this to make it shiny but to dump the resin right on top the um, texture would totally disappear and um, as far as these little guys, that picture, <laughs> so I ended up signing up for that one um, shutter stock, it was called, because when I, um, I knew that I wanted to do the tire swing, and I really was just going to do a tire swing and then do maybe a little park bench and some teeny tiny fall flowers coming up, but um, I googled a tire swing, child on a tire swing, and that picture came up from Shutterstock, and I thought, oh, God, that would be so perfect if I could, you know, paint that on there. So that's why I ended up signing up for that. So I'm going to use my um, 
other ones before I either cancel or if I use it a lot, I might keep it. And I'm not advertising for them. I, you know, I don't get paid or anything like that. But I just thought that that was so cute. And then those two little girls over there, I thought they turned out so cute too. Um, and like I said, I am not a painter. I could not just like freehand this by any means. I have to have something behind it. So I'm also always searching for like free clip art and you gotta be careful with that too because some of it you're only allowed to use for certain reasons. I don't sell anything, so, um, um, but with this, I guess you could with that shutter stock if you were to sign up for it. Anyway, um, so I, I just love the way that it turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed the project. I'm trying to think what else I could tell you about it to make it easier. I just, when I put, I don't know, I'm feeling like I'm gonna get message saying, oh, you should have kept it with all the green and yellow on there. It just looked like too many colors to me. Um, so that's why I ended up with just the red and red and orange on there. So um, let me know what you think, though, because you could see what it looked like with all the other. I did put some yellow on it. I did leave some yellow, but I took all the green off. And, you know, originally when I did this, I was going to do, because of um, the season for all things under heaven, I was going to do the tree. I've seen people do trees where they have it... Um, you know, uh, summer, fall, spring, or spring, summer, fall, winter. I was thinking about doing that, but this was three panes. I thought that would be better if I had four. So uh, maybe sometime I'll do something like that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. If you enjoy the channel, go ahead and subscribe. We have the Facebook page going. Great place to display your art, great place to see other people's art um, for ideas, a great place to ask questions, a lot of beginners, a lot of people have been doing it for years. They're just a great group. Anyway, come join us there, and I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks for watching.